Hello, welcome to Mass Live. Welcome back to Mass Live. Um, here is your starter challenge. We're going to be looking at place value this week. Um, so to get you started, it says what is the value of the underlying digit? So there is a number here. Okay, it's a five digit number. Can you work out what the value of the underlying digit is? Have a look at that. We'll come back to it in a minute. There's different ways you can do this. You might know it straight away, you might practice this quite a bit. You might look at the other digits to help you. You might spot something in the number that can also help you. Uh, you can either write it in or say it in word form or in number form. There's different ways to explain the value of a number. Okay, so value of the underlying digit. So if you've not done it, if you've not done this before, there's a very nice methodical way of working through this. Like I say, some of you might just go, oh, it's that. Great, but everyone starts at different points, okay? So it's a whole number. We have a comma here, it's not a decimal point, so we know it's a positive integer, it's a whole number, okay? So if you're not sure, because there's a lot of digits, you can work across. Now, the smallest value in a whole number is the ones or the units. And obviously we know that that is right at the bottom. So this is our ones or our units. And then the next biggest place value after the units is the tens. Okay. And then it's the hundreds. So we've got our hundreds, tens and units. So 421 is in that number. One is in that number, two tens is in that number, which is 20. Four hundreds is in that number, which is 400. <laughs> so after that, what's, think about what's the next biggest thing after hundreds? It's thousands. And then you've got the biggest, next after is 10,000. So therefore, the three is in the thousands column. Okay, so it must be... Again, you can write it in words or you can write it in numbers or 3,000. So if you've got one of those two, doesn't matter which one, you are absolutely correct. So the three in that number is worth 3,000. Okay. The eight is worth 10,000. And why I also mention any symbols is the comma itself. The comma tends to separate different place values. So when there's the comma here, this means that this bit is thousands, thousands. You've also got another set of thousands here, which is your hundred thousands. So all this part here is thousands. And then there's another comma, which is when you go to your millions. So say, for example, I made it into a bigger number. Say if I made it into five, six, eight, three, four, two, one, it would be five million, six hundred and eighty-three thousands, because they're all the thousands. Okay, how many thousands do we have? 683. Okay, so 5,683,000, and then as we say that as normal, 421. Okay, and lots of math side lessons on place value. So, what are we doing in place value today? So, each week is going to be an overall theme, an overall umbrella theme. So, like I say, it's going to be place value. But, of course, I'm not going to repeat the same lesson twice because you can catch up as well. You can catch up with it. So we're going to look today at comparing numbers. Comparing numbers. And you need to use place value to be able to do that. Okay? Because you need to be able to explain how one bigger number is bigger, smaller or the same as another number. So the basics of it is this. We've got two numbers, uh, maybe 200. Actually, I shouldn't say the numbers out loud. Shh. That number, whatever that number is. And I'm going to say this number. So how would we compare those numbers? 
So there's different ways you can approach it. You've not necessarily been asked to give an answer, but you can discuss how the numbers are similar and how they are different. So there's lots of ways you could do it. I mean, for example, the most obvious thing that I can see is this is a four digit number and this is a three digit number. Now you might think, well, that's obvious. But when it comes to things like ordering numbers, which we're going to do on Wednesday, you have to be, you need to spot, say you've got a range of different numbers to order. It's quick to go, oh, right, okay, those are the smallest ones because they've only got three digits. The others have got four, the others have got five. So I know I need to start with these. And it really helps your quick comparing of numbers. So that might seem obvious, but in a, an extended task, and you'll see this on Wednesday, it's good to, it's good to know quite quickly. That, so if it's a three digit and a four digit, this one obviously has thousands, but this one doesn't, okay? It's got units, tens and hundreds. This has got units, tens and hundreds, but it's also got thousands. It's also got thousands. The digits, are pretty similar. They've got a two, an eight, and a three, and a two, and an eight, and a three, but there's a zero there. Definitely not the same number though, okay? Remember zero, our lovely zero, is acting as a placeholder. Because we like to say, oh, zero means nothing in math. Zero means nothing. No, it doesn't. Because if you just got rid of a zero, then the three would come across, so it would be 283, which is exactly the same number as that, okay? You might have 283 pounds, and your brother's got 2,803 pounds. Now imagine you say, well, the zero doesn't mean anything, so you've actually got the same amount of money as me. No, <laughs> that's not how it works. So if we've got nothing of something, it just, it keeps the other place values either side balanced. Okay, so it is really important. We don't say the same number. Okay, so you can look at facts to do with comparing numbers. But it tends to be when comparing numbers comes up in the curriculum, we use these symbols. More than, less than, equal to. Okay, more than, less than, equal to. And the best way to remember is this little guy. Oh, I should do the teeth on the inside. But <laughs> it's not an odd lesson step. This isn't strictly mathematically correct, but we like to, when we're teaching this, is to make the jaw, I, can't, I, I actually gave it hair then rather than teeth, didn't I? The jaw, because sometimes we think like, well, which, which one's which? One's which? Is more than that way or is it that way? But then it could be the other way because the numbers are the other way around. So don't stress about which one's which. It, you wouldn't be able to identify it. It's applying it that's the most important thing. So if you think that here it is mathematically and here it is, is in the funny crocodile art form, these two are the same. The crocodile eats the biggest number. So this is a great way to remember how to compare different digits using the more than, less than symbol. So the crocodile eats the biggest number. So let me show you a couple of examples. I'm gonna put some boxes, they would expect you to put it in the boxes is your answer. Okay, so we could have So this could be question one, question two, and question three. And I'll ask you, using the following, use the following symbols to compare each set of numbers. That would be the question. Use the following symbols to compare each set of numbers. So question one, you've got this number on this side, this number on this side. Okay, if we went back to basics, we would say this has got four units, and this has got two tens, and the number is 24. But we know 
Yeah, 24, 36. 36 is the biggest number comparing just those two. So remember, the crocodile eats the biggest number. Next one, we've got 11 and we've got this number. Now it's got a one and a one, but it's been separated by zero. Okay, the zero is acted as a placeholder. So it's got one unit, no tens, and 100. So it's 101. And 101 is bigger than 11. This time, on this one, we've got 7 and 2 and 2 and 7. Again, similar digits. So, and, this and they're both two-digit numbers, so we have to check carefully. Now, always start with the biggest one in a whole number. So this has got 7 tens, and this has got 2 tens. 7 tens is bigger than 2 tens, 72 is bigger than 27. So the crocodile is the other way, it's going to eat the 72 because it is bigger and the crocodile is very greedy. So I'm going to give you a go. So if you want to just do this on paper or you just want to write the answer, go for it. Have a go at those. Can you compare those sets of numbers that I have given using the more than, less than symbols? Oh, sorry, I haven't done any shout outs. Okay, carried away. We've got Lucy. Hi, Lucy. We've got Oscar. We've got Rufus. Hello. Brilliant. Hello. Hello, Nawa. Hello Abu Bakr, welcome. Oh, got some answers. Okay, now I was giving it a go. Give me a few more seconds. So looking at what we've got. So we've got a two digit number to start. Question one, 13, 31. Well, we know 31 is bigger than 13, especially because 31 has got three tens, 13's only got one ten. 48 and 45, well we know on the number line that 45 comes before 48, so 48 must be the biggest number, it comes afterwards. And then for the last one, this decimal appeared, okay? So that's something to spot. Now, in a decimal number, obviously this is the bit that is less than a whole, but this is still our whole number. So if we ignore, now the other number, just check, has not got a decimal. Okay, it's a whole number. So I actually don't need to focus on this yet. I want to compare the whole number. Mainly because I can cross this. I could just look at it and go, well, there's nothing there. There's no actual decimal value. So the 12 is 12 in itself. And this is also 12. So if this is 12 as a whole number, and this is 12 with a decimal, but there's no decimal actually there. This is still 12. So they would be equal they are the same, okay? So 12.0 is the same as 12. 12.000000 12 forever is the same as 12 because there's, it's just telling you there's no decimals there. If, for example, it was 12.6, it's 12 and 12, but there is an extra tiny little bit of decimal value there, so it would go this way around, okay? But, no, they are both equal. 12.0 is the same as 12. Okay, so that is the basic introduction of comparing your numbers using these more than or less than symbols. So, but you, a lot of the time, 
in various forms of mastery, you might be challenged a little bit further and you might to go to a, like a greater depth. And a type of de greater depth question might be this. So again, you've been asked to compare using the symbols, but this time, this is what you might have. So you've got to compare these values. Now, I know it's calculating, okay, but you're still ending up with an answer, a numerical answer, which you then still got to compare. So this is where, when you go into a greater depth of a topic, another topic or to multiple topics can get drawn in, just like word problems in a way. When you do word problems, it can be to do with any um any calculation, any arithmetic topic. So let's have a look. So to be able to do this, we can't just use the numbers that are there. It's not 63 or 6 and 3. It's not 20 and 5. We have to actually work it out. So 6 times 3 is 18. I'm just going to put that in brackets underneath. I don't need to change it. I don't need to rewrite it. I'm just making notes, remembering it. And 20 take away 5 is 15. So now I know that this answer, this means 18 and this means 15. And I know that 18 is bigger than 15. So I would put it that way around. Okay. So again, it's just the same comparing of numbers, but you have to do a little calculating first. Okay. You might get... So same thing, you've got to compare the values, the values you've been given. So 5 to the power 2, it's not 5 times 2, 5 to the power 2, that means 5 times 5. Two lots of 5 multiplied together, which is 25. So this here means 25. And then here, 15 add 10 is 25. So these two are equal. I've compared, I've found what the numbers are that represent it, I've compared them, and they are equal. So I want you to have a go now, before we finish. Okay. It's quite a short topic, this one. So you'll see that Wednesday is a little bit longer because there's a lot more to process because we're comparing numbers today. We're comparing numbers on Wednesday, but we're comparing a lot more numbers because you're going to be ordering them. Okay, so here are your three. There's your first one. Um, and oh, have a little think. <laughs> Have a go at this. Oh, it keeps pausing. Does it keep pausing? Oh, sorry about that. Because I've got it on, I'm sort of watching myself, so I'm just gonna give a little wave and see if I if I do up here. Yeah, all oh, looks good on my side. Sorry if it's not good on your side. Um, obviously this will go on YouTube afterwards. Hello, those of you who are watching on YouTube, and you'll be able to catch up.
else once it's gone in. Don't worry if you just finish, eh? So 17 take away 3. So 17, 16, 15, 14. So that's what that means there. 14. And 4 times 4 is 16. And then when you compare the answer, 16 is bigger than 14. So it will go that way. 15 plus 8. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that means 23. And 2 times 10 is 20. And 23 is bigger than 20. So we'll go this way around. 7, 7 to 49. Okay. Oh, and then this one. So 60 plus 10. Okay, that's 70. And then take away 1 is 69. Ah, so they both have a 9 in the unit. Okay, but they have different 10s. So this is still bigger than this one. Okay. There we go. Thank you for joining in today's lesson. If you are a patron of Maths Dive, you will get a challenge sheet put onto the patron page. If you're not a patron, have a look at my page and find out more about it. Um, it would be great for you to join in as part of the Maths Live gang. Um, and there, as some of you might know, there's been a competition running. It finished yesterday. As soon as I log off this, stay around on the page. I'll be logging back on and announcing who the winner is. So either I'll see you in a few minutes or I'll see you on Wednesday or I'll see you on YouTube. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.